talking about your um, trip to China recently, and that reminded me, like, well, it's been a while since I've talked to you, but I really wanted to hear about that because I feel like our misguided perception, um, purposefully misguided perception, um, about China and is very clear to me. Like, I, I, I know whatever our perception is isn't correct, but I, <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know what is correct, but I know we're not, right? Like, so right. I, I feel like I'm a step ahead there, but I'd love to hear like about that, that trip and like how that even came about and like, you know, anything like really insightful and cool that you got from that. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was a whirlwind trip. It was four days. I was in Beijing. Uh, I did not get to run around China and see everything. I was also part of a, a forum or a summit there. And so I spent most of the time there, but really got to see Beijing for about a day or two. So uh, I don't want people to think that I saw every inch of China, <laughs> you know, but um, it, it, I still got to see some things and it was amazing. Um, they asked me to speak at, I believe it was called the second annual international, uh, Chinese summit on democracy. And, uh, I spoke, I was, I think the only American, uh, that wasn't via video. There were some Americans via video. Um, but there were some other very cool people there like George Galloway. Uh, most people know him and, um, uh, if I get his name right, Fred Mamembe, the who gave an uh, incredible speech, the socialist leader in uh, Zambia, I think. Um, I think I saw that. I think yeah. I saw a clip of his speech. Was that making the rounds about it's how America has any concept of democracy? Yeah, yeah. He he just knocked it out the park, and um, and it. You know, and I and I gave a speech as well, but it it really was a very international, very cool to meet all these people from nations around the world. And you know, most of these nations have some form of cooperation with China. They don't have this kind of aggressive anti-China propaganda, uh, and so they they just kind of find it all ridiculous the way the U.S. is treating China right now. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we can get into some of the specifics, but, uh, it, it just was a, a very cool trip and, you know, a lot that, uh, a lot that I maybe expected to see that I didn't see, uh, you know, nobody, the way people talked about it, I thought there'd be someone following me around, you know, a minder or something and yeah. <laughs> those type of things. But, uh, no, you know, they're, they're understandably skeptical of, of the U S and U S software, you know? So the thing that shocked me was I arrived there and I knew that, that I wasn't going to have like cell phone reception or something like that, but I wasn't prepared for everything that I use, like Gmail, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. There was, I, I could not get connect in any way. And then I started speaking to Chinese people and they all go, Oh, well, we just use a VPN. So, so even though all those things are banned, they all get around it and they didn't, they didn't say, oh, we get a VPN and we'll, if we're found out, we'll be chained down in a dungeon somewhere. They were like, oh yeah, we use a VPN and we get around it. You know, you only get chained down in a dungeon somewhere when you do things in this country. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're, if you're Steven Donziger or uh, Mumia Abu-Jamal, then you get chained in a dungeon. Exactly. Yeah. What would you say were some of the biggest differences you noticed in Chinese culture versus American culture? There, there is definitely a cultural thing about about authority and uh, you know accepting of authority and not wanting to offend authority, and so I think that's what leads leads some of the co confusion. You know, I, I get that some people that that there's there's certain aspects of it that may be justified, but the the confusion about oh my god, we saw a Chinese military stationed on a sidewalk, and it shows a guy with a gun standing there, and it's like well. In the U.S., we have the same thing in the airports, uh, but the difference is it looks very scary to us seeing a Chinese man in a, you know, sitting with straight eyes, you know, and a gun. But it, 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 I, everybody I spoke to, and and you know, I did speak to a bunch of Chinese people. They, they don't. It's like us. It's like us walking by someone with a assault rifle in an airport, a military guy in an airport. It, they don't. They just walk by it. They don't view it as anything. It's just. It's their society. That doesn't mean it's all right. That doesn't mean I, I love having people with guys, guys with guns in any society. But 
I don't think, you know, for us, it's looked at, you see a photo of that and you go, what a repressive society. And it's like, I, I think it's kind of similar to, to ours. I don't know. Cause you know, they don't, they also don't have cops on every block. They also, they, their interaction with police. I mean, that I witnessed and that I, people I spoke to their interaction with police. Yeah. At times police do ask for ideas. They were, which is different than the U S but they also don't think the cops might shoot them over it. <laughs> so there's, Things that are worse, you know, I don't like police and I don't want them everywhere, but also they don't, the people that I spoke to and saw, this doesn't speak for everyone, uh, they don't have this fear that, oh, if if you, if they don't like you or you're the wrong color or, uh, you know, they, they pull you over for something and then they, uh, d- they just get scared of you, they might shoot you. That's not really a thing there, I don't think. So. Yeah, that is nice to hear. I was thinking that when you were talking that, We are so militarized at the local level now that it's absurd for any of us to even point any sort of fingers at China. Like, it's just ridiculous. And I also think that when people talk about them in terms of media, everyone always criticizes this idea of state-sponsored media. But the state media there, from what I've ever seen, seems a lot more unbiased than our oligarchic-sponsored media here. So I, I just like, right. again, I just see it's different, but not necessarily not as good. Right. So our, it's, it's weird because in a way, there's an argument to be made that our media is more free uh, because the, the, it's not technically state media, you know, CNN and MSNBC. But in, in really, that's uh, a false equivalence or a false difference, honestly, because we live in an inverted totalitarian system. We are ruled by the anonymous corporate state. The corporate state is at best in bed with, but really owns our government. So they own the networks as well. And if you aren't putting out what's allowable for the, the corporations that run our system, then you're not on those networks. And I'm, you know, I'm not allowed on those networks. And the one network that actually allowed us to say whatever we wanted and I was never censored was RT and that we see what happened to that was purge. You know, it lasted 10 years or whatever and a little over 10 years. And then it was purged from the system because it was saying things that aren't allowed on our networks. So in that way, we have essentially the same thing they have. Uh, We just get to run around or at least our media and our government get to run around and go, oh, our media is all free and theirs is all under lockdown. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media and consider joining our Patreon where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.